Question 4 says the function in is defined as f of x is 1 over 3 x minus 2. Find the value of f of 3 plus f of minus 3. So to work out f of 3 plus f of minus 3, so we have f of 3 plus f of minus 3. That's how we're going to work on. So we're going to substitute in x as 3 to get that f of 3 is equal to 1 over 3 times 3. That is 1 over 3 times 3 is 1. 1 minus 2. 1, 1 over 3 times 3 is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 plus f of negative 3. f of negative 3 is 1 over 3 times negative 3. 1 over 3 times negative 3. 1 over 3 times negative 3 is negative one, negative one minus two is negative three. They get plus negative three. So you have negative one plus negative three, and that is negative four. Nice and easy, soft. After you get that now it says calculate the value of X for which F of X equal five. All right, so calculate the value of x for which f of x is fine. So you're gonna set f of x being fine. So you're gonna have one over three x minus two, and that is equal to five. Bring over the two and say so you have one over three x. One over three x is gonna equal seven. And so if one third of x is seven, one third of what number gives is seven? X must be 21. One third of 21 is seven. And so X is equal to 21. That's a that, X is 21. Nice and easy, soft, X is 21. Now it says determine the inverse of the function. To determine the inverse of the function, the first step is to interchange X and Y. So you're gonna rewrite the, the, the the function as x is equal to one over three y. I don't like to say y. I'm just gonna write f inverse, one over three f inverse minus two. Then you need to make this y the subject, your f inverse. So we bring over the two to say two plus x. Two plus x is equal to one over three f inverse. And if two plus X is equal to one over three F inverse, to get F inverse, we multiply through by three. So we're gonna times both sides by three to get that F inverse of X. So this is the inverse function now. The inverse function of X is equal to three times two, which is six, plus three times X, which is three X. So the inverse is six plus three X, nice and easy. You can even check your answer. You can put in F inverse of five and that should give you 21. F inverse of five is six plus three times five and that is 21. So we know that our inverse function is correct. All right, and that takes care of part three. Nice and easy. Now question four, part B, we're on to coordinate geometry. So coordinate geometry, this is pretty much the nicest part of the paper because coordinate geometry, the graph below is gonna show us two lines. You have two lines, you have L1 and L2. It said the line L1 intersects the y-axis at zero one. So this point right here is zero one. And the line L2 intersects the x and y-axis at 12, zero and zero six. So you're giving us two points on the line L2. It says find the gradients of L1 and L2. So to find the gradient of L1 and L2, well, we know what to find gradient of ready is rise over run. So let's find a gradient of L1 first. So we know this point on L1, 
And let's identify another point on L1. Another point on L1 that we see is right here. So, so I'm going to use that point. Another point on L1 is 4, 9. That looks like 4, 9. X is 4 and Y is 9. All right, so the gradient of L1, now we can calculate it. So I like to call gradient M. So I'm calling it M L1. M L1 means the gradient of L1. The gradient of L1 is a rise or Y2 minus Y1, or Y1 here is one, Y2 minus Y1, so nine minus one over X2, or X2 is four minus over X1, which is zero. So it is nine minus one over four minus zero. And so that is gonna give us eight over four, which is two. So that's the gradient of M1. Then we need the gradient of L2. The gradient of L2 is, we know two points of Freddy, we know right here, so, which is zero, six. I oh, know right here, so it's 12, two. So the gradient is rise, or Y2, which is six, minus y1 y1 is zero this is our y value of six so our y value of zero over x2 or x2 here is zero minus our x1 or x1 here is 12. if you're not sure how i'm getting these values write down the coordinates the coordinates of this point we know is 12 zero and the coordinates of this point up here is zero, six. All right, and then you use Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So it is six minus zero over zero minus 12. So six minus zero is six and zero minus 12 is negative 12. And so six over negative 12 is negative a half. Six over negative 12 is negative a half. Nice and easy, soft. Now it says determine the equation of the line L1. Now, to determine the equation of the line L1, remember y is equal to mx plus c. This is the equation of a line. y is equal to mx plus C. Now what is M? M is the gradient of the line. So in this case, Y is equal to the gradient of L1 we found was two. So Y is equal to two X plus C. What is C? C is, is, is the Y axis intercept. C is where it cuts the Y axis and it cuts the Y axis. L1 cuts the Y axis at one. And so y is equal to 2x plus 1. This is the equation of L1. Nice and easy. Now it says, what is the relationship between L1 and L2? Without even doing it, you could have just looked at the graph and see it. Clearly, if you look at what is happening right here, these two lines have 90 degrees between them. And so these lines are perpendicular, all right? L1 and L2 clearly are perpendicular. But if you didn't see it clearly from the graph, then you could have realized it from your calculations. Whenever the product of the two gradients is equal to negative one, then the two lines are perpendicular, all right? So you can tell them. You can even write it down, show them that when you work out the gradient of L1 times the gradient of L2, you're getting two times negative a half and two times negative a half is negative one. Since the product of their gradients is negative one, anytime the product of the gradient of two lines is negative one, then the two lines are perpendicular to each other. So you can say that the two lines are per 
perpendicular to each other since the products are the product of their gradient. Product of their gradients is negative one. All right, so these two lines are perpendicular since the product of their gradient is negative one. And that takes care of question four. Nice and easy, soft with a capital T.